Okay, we just uh, unclamped it again, planed it to our marks where we think it's right, and I've just checked it again. So now we are pretty good right up to, let's see, I already forgot. We're good on width up the back here. We were okay to here before. Now, this is still not quite in. We have to trim it a little bit. Mostly it's the width. It's just 30 seconds too big. The angle is slightly off. But the angle is good all the way up here now. It's just a little bit too wide. Now, just as a check, one of the things I want to do at this point is this is now just about in place where it's going to be finished. Is check our width dimension on the whole hull. So we go back to our jib, and we set this up on our marks that are still here. And of course, when you change the width of the boat, that changes the distance back. So we think our marks are right at the 5 foot 6 mark. Put it in place, sight it, this is right about on the money. So right now, our width originally was on the nominal, and now it's almost at the max. Uh, it's in between nominal and max, which means it's moved a quarter inch out. That's fine. That's pretty close. As you can see, it still has a bit of movement, and that will get set eventually with the grade. So, we're pretty good on that. Just as a check measurement. And now, we can check where we start filling up here where the angles change. Now, if you come look at this, I haven't planed this yet, but you can see that if you keep the rail flat, as you clamp it, it hits on the bottom and leaves a gap here. So that, in essence, that's the amount we have to get cut away. Clamping it hard would twist it, and it'll just spring the rail up. Get rid of the support. So if you were to clamp this tightly, you can see where it starts to uh, angle it up. That's what we're going to trim next. So we're going to clamp it. Oh, as another check, one of the things you can do. We take our old piece. We haven't changed this at all from when it came out of the boat. We can place this in, and we know where it goes, and see, does this still fit? Have we altered the whole shape that much? And as you can see, it still fits perfectly. So we're good to go. Okay, we've trimmed some of this. One of the tricks to help him to do this. I always just try to make it as easy as possible. I pull this over, I'll just throw this clamp here, just kind of hold it, and that puts it in place where you can kind of see what you're doing. So we've trimmed this. Our biggest issue here is our width, because we're trimming less off of this, is wide. It's an eighth of an inch wide. So we're trimming a little bit more here. And then we're entering into this area where we haven't fit it at all yet. So with the rail very close to this, you can see the hull is coming up and it's at that angle. So you can almost use the hull as a gauge and start taking off. Doing a preliminary fit, just using the hull itself as, uh, as our gauge. You can see the angle. This out forward. And you can hold this out. You see how that angle, I don't know if it's a straight across, but it's close. Sight this.
you start with that angle, you can see where you have the plain wood and the old dirty wood or pencil marks or whatever you use as a gauge. And I'm halfway cut. You can see you have one plane and a second plane. So you want to take that angle, keep on the angle, and extend it until it reaches the top. Shrunk and the ammo doesn't line up anymore. We don't really need that hole. So, a little mix. As it turns out. Alright, I planed this almost planed to the very top. Leave it like that, and we go back to fitting. It's starting its climbing. Part of that is because we're not fit at the very bow. So this is high. And one of the things to check is uh, take something like a piece of 
paper and see if uh, this is tight on the bottom joint. This is pretty good on the bottom. So this is uh, this means this needs to get beveled. Uh, so we have a fat eight. So it's an eight plus on the bottom. I have to trim on this one. And here. close on this. So we have to go back to our original fitting of the transom. Because as we flex this out, the uh, hull changes. The angle of the rail as it hits the transom has changed. So we fit this originally, but we didn't worry too much about it. So we have to go back here. And since we're close to fitting at the very end now, we go back here and we look at this joint. And it is opened up slightly, so we remark this and we test it. All right, now we've got the rail is fit all the way up to here, and we've checked where we have partly fit here, and it's tipping up. But we can't fit that exactly because we can't get this bow section down. So what we're going to do is trim the bow section. It's, it's a bit of a catch too. You have to trim this, you have to fit this, you have to do it all at the same time. Now, we can't cut this exactly to length. Because one of the things we're going to do is in the stern, to finally fit it, we're going to add a screw from the transom pulling the rail, pull the inwheel to make a tight joint to the transom. So that will take this inwheel and slide it this way only like a 30 second, maybe a 16th of an inch. But that changes this fit. So we're going to just look at where this is and mark it, which is here. And that's going to change some, so we're going to actually uh, cut it a little bit long and trim it. And as long as this is in fairly tight, you can say that this is going to transfer this joint up from here to here. So this is nominally what the length of this is going to be. And then it'll have to get cut also down the center line. So we'll cut it probably an eighth of an inch longer than that. And then we unclamp, attach the rear end, the stern end, and then we can do a final fitting here. We can't actually fit this until this is allowed to drop in. Okay, we're going to uh, put the transom screw in. What I did originally was mark where, I uh, just outlined where the outway will fit here. After it got fit in, this line moved in here because obviously it got in tighter. I also put a mark here showing where the uh, where the oak was because I want the screw from the transom into the oak because it'll bite better. But I don't want it too close to the edge. The uh, uh, I have a long drill here. I don't want it too close to the uh, the edge here. It'll splinter. So I want it fairly inside and about centered. <laughs> Pretty square of the wood. I have this long bit just because I don't have to move for this. Drill a hole like this and back it up so it doesn't splinter. There we go. We'll clean it small. Then we'll re drill it from the stern side with uh, the plug so we can have a plug cutter. Did 
These are just spacers to get the rail at the right height. In case you want to know what that is. We have uh, reset this and we want to drill it for the screws. This is actually the same screw we're going to be using in the uh, uh, in the outwells. The, uh, the bits that I use I like are the uh, tapered bits from Fuller. And I'm setting this up so that it is slightly short. So it bites nicely. Partly this is end grain. And this will be okay uh, because it's going to set a little deeper. So now you get this lined up. And that's all prepped. And we can drive the screw and suck this joint tight. at the stern so the in wheels pulled out and we're clamped up the way it's going to be and this is tight all the way along here so if we press this in so there are no gaps we find that our mark we originally put here is actually pretty good so that's decent and this is decent this is going to drop down so we can cut it much closer now we also have to cut the uh, center line here so where these two intersect is approximately the center line. So we're actually going to have to cut this away and cut this back. That center line joint is never going to be tight because we're always clamping and fitting. And, and the tighter you make this, it opens that joint. It's very difficult to do that. The four stay is going to go through there anyway. So we'll end up making a uh, parallel slot and probably fill a little block of wood in at the end. So, we uh, just take a jigsaw, we'll trim this a little bit more, and hit it. Okay, we've roughed this out, it's a little bit closer, but the angle of the stem comes up, and relative to the rail, it's not square. You can see that this is square on the rail, well, that's not. So what we want to do is uh, take a plane, and we start fine-tuning it get that to fit. My little stick on. What's the right one? The support stick. Pistons are moving around a bit. Stabilize a little Also on end grain. Shorten the color. tight here and it has to be able to drop in. The angle, I get a little angle this way here because it didn't cut it very well. So we want to trim this off a little. So we'll support it. And get a chisel or something here. As I say, this isn't too critical because we'll eventually cut the slot out here and add a block of wood. But we need to get it to be able to drop in. And it's pretty close. Let's trim a hair more at the very bottom. Make sure I put my arm in the way of the camera. Alright, you should chisel towards yourself too. Always chisel towards your heart. <laughs> Real safe. No, they didn't want me in the Boy Scouts. Alright. That's close. 
Now, we can uh, get started here. So what I want to do now is test and see how we doing on this angle. And we're still up here quite a bit. All this is up. So let's backtrack a little and we'll go ahead and uh, now trim this to fit this against the hole. Okay, test clamping. This is really good all along here. It's good enough there. Really good. Right here at the bow, you can see how this is high here and low here. So it's tipped a little bit in. So I really want to have two issues. I have a crack opening a little bit here. So I want to shave this, and because this seems to be tipping down a little, um, I'm going to shave it mostly off the top, because right up here at the stem is where the hull is twisting back more vertically. So I'll undo this, trim a little bit, and we should be ready to assemble that. Clamp this up, and we have just an ever so slight twist here, where these aren't lining up, and it's just a hair high here, and it's a little low here. So. This is government work. It's close enough. What we can do to remedy that when we go to put it all together is we just force these flat together. Bingo! Look at that. It fits. And I'm going to ease this clamp off just a hair. And this. And tap that down. Doesn't stay. Okay, fine. Good enough. Time we glue and screw all this, and we're done. We belt sand it. We're fine. Now, interestingly, we went to use these original outwales because we thought, oh, we have the holes already. We will start one end. We put it in. All the holes match up, and it's going to be fine. But no, the dilemma we run into is that, as you see here. We flush them out perfectly in the transom, we come all the way forward, clamped up and everything, and they finish out a half inch longer than the boat. What has happened is, in the 45 or 50 years this boat's been sitting in a garage, we've determined that the hull itself has shrunk. And that's bad. And the only thing we can figure to do about it is soak it in water, but we don't want to do that. We like a nice dry hull. We're going to strip this and glass it. And that's partly why we're putting these outwales on this way, where the screws are not countersunk yet. We're going to take this off, that wheel is not glued on, so we can then glass the hull, and then we will counterbore all these screws and epoxy the outwheel on, and that will be our finish thing, where the glass goes up underneath the outwheel. But we're going to have to uh, actually alter this. And the reason is... For I'll show you here. When you do all your check measurements of the boat, this one's important. This is L. What we have here is the boat is 16 feet 11 and a quarter inches to the outwales. The boat itself is a little short of that. The measurement is 17 feet plus or minus a half. So, we have a little issue here. We have to make the boat longer. Little issues. I thought we had one. Okay, because we're a little concerned about this length issue, and this isn't a thistle right now, what we did is we took our jig, we measured back to the 5 6 point, and the length obviously changes as you squeeze the boat. If you squeeze it in really tight, it makes it longer. It should be noted that we took the transom out and refinished that, and we put the transom back in exactly where it was, but the stripping of the varnish and sanding it reduced it probably 1 16th inch overall thickness, half that being on the aft, half forward, so the boats we technically made it shorter by 1 32nd of an inch. So if we take our jig, we put it to the outwales where they're projected half an inch beyond the boat, and we clamp, we squeeze the boat together and clamp it on the minimum dimension for this width. Now we get, on our length, we show uh, 16 foot 11 and 3 eighths. 
maybe 3 8 plus. Which, another eighth inch, and we make the minimum. So that's what we'll do to get the boat back up to length, is we'll, in, we'll uh, build up the stem, and we'll have to squeeze the boat. We'll make it long. Okay, now we're, uh, we're all fit on the rail. It's all clamped up. We'll unclamp it, um, and get ready. We'll uh, glue it on. What we're going to do is get all the tools together you need to do that. Um, the way we're installing this, as I say, we're taking this out wheel back off when we're done. So I'm not counterboring these yet. So these screws are going to go in here. I'm using two and a half inch screws. They'll be slightly sunk, so they're just barely catching the oak when they go in. When they're counterboard, they'll be halfway in. They'll be, they'll be into the oak a little bit. But we're not doing that part yet because we're taking these off for the moment. You want to pre-drill these almost the full depth. Uh, if you're in the um, mahogany, the mahogany is softer, so that'll be okay. Um, so I have one drill set up for that. I have another drill, which is actually a hammer drill, which I find works better on stainless steel. They're not magnetic anyway, so you don't want a magnetic tip. I have a long shank, which helps um, partly to get by the clamps when the clamps are in the way, and also to uh, when you have the counter bore and you get epoxy all over the stuff, it doesn't get into the mechanism. It's just on the shank, which you can clean. The hammer drill helps because the stainless is somewhat soft, and if you, pre if you pressure them too much, they tend to slip. As soon as you slip with a Phillips screw, and the Phillips is nice because they're self-centering, but it immediately boogers up the uh, head, and then you can't drive it. The hammer drill actuates when pressure is achieved and it keeps the bit from slipping out. You have to be a little careful because you can torque the head right off, they're very powerful, but you have to know your drills and tools as to how much force you can you can put on them. So when we glue this, we're going to clamp it exactly like we've done. Uh, make sure you clamp it not on the screw heads, on the holes. We then line up, you'll see me do it, we'll drill out for the screws and then we just screw all the way up. We've got not enough screws here. We just bought a box. We'll have a little bit at the end of the video on our various suppliers, our Ten. recommendations. Nine. This is Jamestown Distributors. Just buy a box of screws, about eight bucks. Okay, we're mixing up epoxy to do this. We'll mix up a nice little batch here. We use a scale. The epoxy that I use is from uh, a company called Progressive Epoxy. And they are an internet company. I buy it from them. It's much less expensive. It's a very good epoxy. It is what's called a non-amine blush, which means, unlike, say, Goujon epoxy, when it cures, it does not have the greasy, waxy surface feel to it. It's, a, uh, it's very clean. You can actually glue directly on the surface, and you don't have to remove that for things. Now, we'll uh, again we'll have at the end of this some, some uh, links so you can follow. This is just a straight epoxy, the regular viscosity. This is too thin for what we're doing, so we're going to take one of the products they have is polymicrofiber pulp. And I don't like using the silica and I don't like using glass so much because of the toxicity and the itching. This is more of a cellulose type of product, which is fibrous. It's not going to kill you right off the bat. So this we're going to mix in, and uh, it's a thickening agent, so it makes it more thixotropic. A little bit gooey. So you kind of crush this in and mix it up. And then, because I don't like the white color, I'm going to mix in some just regular sawdust, which I have. When we did the transom on this particular boat, we belt sanded part of it. And this still runs off. Since we're putting the glue on a vertical surface, we're thickening this so that it just doesn't run off. You can put it on there and it sticks. Also, being a little thicker, it will then fill voids. So when we belt into the transom, 
we gathered up some of the sawdust. Got a few lumps here. Let's crush them out. Okay, you know when you've added enough when this nice mix and you have it a certain thickness on the stick and it doesn't just drip right off. It adheres to the stick. So we're fine. Now, I have this other little container full of the sawdust from belt sanding and I'm just going to add some of this because I don't like it to be colored white and this will just blend it in and darken it to red. Whatever wood you're using. It's less obtrusive when you have voids that you see. And a little redder than that. That should go. There you go. Makes me hungry. Mm. Okay, we've got all our stuff together. Our glue's ready. First thing you want to do is the end grain of the rail because being end grain it will tend to suck up the epoxy and if you put it on and immediately clamp it up and glue it the clamping will squeeze out the epoxy and then as it draws in you have no glue in the actual joint so you put this on let it soak in and then we'll make sure we reapply just before we assemble it to make sure there's glue in that joint okay now Clean the hull. There are different ways you can apply it. I'm a proponent of glue sticks because you can get a pretty good amount spread on the way you want it to the right thickness, the right area. But pretty much anything you want to be gluing, get glue on it. Okay, if you squeeze a little into the holes, the holes are, if you fill the holes with glue, that's not a problem. As you can see, this is thick enough that when we clamp it, it's going to squeeze out. You have a nice amount to adhere, but it's not running and dripping down the hull. You want a little bit, you want enough that you have a slight bit of access, excess when you clamp it on. And then when we're done, we'll just run a little tiny fillet. That excess squeezing out the bottom will just run a fillet on the inside. All right, we have glue on everything, touched up the ends of the rails. So now we do exactly what we did before. And that is, we have our support sticks, and we now clamp it on just like we practiced 10,000 times. difference what we're going to do now is that when you clamp it, you want to make sure you're in between where you're putting the screws. Otherwise you can't put screws in. Subtle but important. Now, I noticed when I was doing this before that I used my right forearm to adjust the in whale down a lot. So I put this sleeve on here to protect my shirt. I can do on something else. But. Uh, so it's clamped just barely. So we want. Oh, we go to here. Now we anchor and pull it out. so that the screw will suck it down. Alright, see that's closed up. And we'll go here and adjust the outlet a little high here. That was low. You have to get all this stuff lined up. This is good. Now, I'll just clamp the whole rail on.
Now, if you have an allergy, or if you're afraid of developing one, wear gloves. Or you put that hand cream on that creates a human glove. Whatever you want to do. I hate gloves. I don't wear them. I'm going to get some epoxy on me. But This has to be exactly the way you want it. That way over there, over there. And the way I, my goal right now is to put this on so that the hull is up just enough that when I belt sand this, after it's all cured, that I'm taking the varnish off the hull and I'm not really removing any hull. Which is about, oh, I don't know how much, say a manila, a manila folder paper thickness thick. Now you may have a little bit of trouble. Once you put glue in it, it becomes slippery. So because it's on a slope, sometimes if you over clamp it, it'll slide and actually pushes it out of place. You have to be a little careful. pretty well though because we've practiced this so many times now if you had help we know that this is in place because we anchored it from the aft uh, if you had somebody working with you they could start screwing the uh, after section right now because it's in place it's not changing from what it is now but we're doing this all alone because my helper is on the camera. So you know, we could get a tripod. We could get a tripod, and then it wouldn't. You know, we would have. No, I don't have to just watch me work and suffer. Get glue all over myself. Yeah, clearly. But that's one alternative if you don't have enough clamps. This is you clamp a bunch of the boat, and then as you screw it, you can remove the clamps. Now, there's a very important aspect of this whole process we have not mentioned. And that is that you really can't... There, there are two aspects of doing a good job in woodwork. One is you always have to let a little blood on it. You get a splinter, you do something, you slice yourself. Eventually, you'll get blood on this. That's okay. In fact, it's important. The second is, we don't have any tunes. It's really good to be blasting the tunes about now. Calm me down. better if you got tunes. Now, if we were doing this with a new rail, we would have glue on both surfaces, and that's really messy. You could get glue on yourself now, because you glue both of that well and well at the same time. Frankly, that's a little easier if you have two people. Here, I notice I have I'm down to two clamps. And the reason for that is I space them a little closer together. I only have two screws between each clamp. So what I'm actually going to have to do, I don't have enough clamps. I'll get this popped into place. It's really close. It slides right in with all I do. I'll just clamp as far as I can. Then I'm going to go ahead and throw in some screws so I can take some clamps from that and move them up.
not working. This one the because the angle is most extreme here. So we're going back. We'll throw some screws in. What you want to do? Get your stool. The hardest part of this is the screws are long enough, and we're going all the way to this joint. If you don't get them accurately aligned, they pop out the top or they pop out the bottom. Either one of those is bad. You want to try and keep it in the center. If anything, you want to go a little bit on the low side because at least in the center section where you sit, you want to round these rails a lot. So a lot of this is going to get cut away when they're routed. I mean, this is the original, and this is way too sharp. I like to roll these down quite a bit. And if your screws are too high in the wood, then they're going to be exposed. You know, so, your, your crew likes that too. So much happier. So you want to eyeball this. You cannot because nothing is square. It's very, very difficult to see your angle. So you want to make sure you're sighting it and sight the top of the wood to make sure that you're in. Now, I'm going in to this depth because I've already checked and that's almost as deep as the screw. So it's pretty much automatic at that point. Now, you see the clamp this way is a little tough. But it works. And as long as it works, we're good. Okay, we got four there. Right, some Depending on how hard this is, usually there's a little bit of epoxy that's going to show up. Or you can take a little bit off the top and put it on the screw to lubricate the screw going in. We're actually taking these screws back out, so that's not so important. And that's it. Just make it flush. To snug it up, and that's all you need. Okay, that means you want to take these clamps off, if it opened up, you would see that the glue would then suck back in. As long as it doesn't, we're good to go. So, I have clamps now. So, let's drive a couple more in. so it's flush in here. Eventually, when this is all set, we'll devise, I like to bend uh, a laminate piece of oak and scarf that in to tie all this together. But, we're at the very end. And for now, that'll do it. Put these in. Take it off, the glue does not suck back in. So at this point, with all the screws in, if you were doing uh, a new rail, you could, would now go back, probably make some new epoxy, this is just epoxy with no fillers, and go ahead and put your bungs in, tap them in as deep as possible. Uh, they should be recessed halfway or so into the wood, the screw heads. And the reason is that as you round them off, you don't want to be exposing those. So, uh, these are just flush for now. They'll get re-drilled when we put the outwales on permanently, and they'll be bunged. Right, have a little bit of squeeze out. This is perfect, because you want to make sure you have enough glue in the joint. So this is a good amount of squeeze out, and if you look underneath, we have approximately the same, which is perfect also. That amount, now you just go with your finger, 
and you just want a nice little fillet and it's all done you don't have to get rid of it just put that little fillet in there if it is too much put it back out here It evens it out. There is a rule about filleting. I believe it's a quarter inch radius. That's about your finger. So don't overdo this. I would say that what we're doing here, squeezing it in there, is probably an eighth of an inch fillet.